guys. Hope everybody's well. Hopefully you checked out and found useful and actually enjoyed part one to Hair Typing 101. If that you haven't, definitely check it out because we'll reference a couple of those things in this video. In part one, I talked about the Lois and the Andre Walker hair typing system. I'm mostly going to reference the Andre Walker hair typing system from here on out because it's the one that most of us talk about when we are referencing hair type in the natural hair community. So essentially when you're talking about a 1, 2, 3, 4, A, B, C, that's the Andre Walker system. I, in the earlier video I shared, I'm not a huge fan of hair typing because I think that more than anything, it's a directional tool. That's what we say in consulting. It gives you a directional idea of just some things to think about, but it shouldn't be definitive. And I think that's where a lot of people go wrong. They really, you know, put too much weight in, you know, what exactly is hair typing? How, you know, how do you measure your hair type? How do you define your hair type? And what does that mean relative to products? And I just don't think that's necessarily the, the most most effective use of it. For me, hair typing is great because it does give us a common language to speak from. So it's easier for us to talk about and compare your hair, my hair, her hair, the styles that were used, the styles that we're doing, the techniques that we're trying, the products that we're using. Um, it makes it easier for us to compare when we're all talking from the same language relative to what's your hair type versus my hair type and how will that impact style, technique, and product. That's about as far as I go as, as far as hair typing and what I think it's great for. Beyond that, I think that too many people get caught up in it. And the bigger problem is because there's no universally accepted system, the measurement of kind of what's a 1A versus a what's a 3B, et cetera, varies a little bit depending on essentially who you're talking to and kind of how they've decided to measure what is a 3A versus a 3B versus a 3C. And that to me is the problem. So again, I like to use it as a directional tool, but not definitive. I think more important than hair typing is understanding just some of the basic science concepts that will help you to understand why hair acts the way that it does. You guys know I'm a huge fan of education. I think I say it all the time and I truly believe it. Education is the very, very best thing that you can do on your natural hair journey. If you can educate yourself about some basic, basic, basic concepts around how hair reacts, and some of the basic ingredients out there, etc., you'll essentially avoid a lot of heartache, a lot of trouble, and a lot of wasted money on products. So, in this video, instead of talking about hair typing, what to me is more important to understand is how the shape of your hair contributes to how your hair reacts, how it responds, how it's going to um, perform relative to styles, techniques, and products. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over some of those very basic science concepts. So let's get started. So first, let's talk a little bit about shape. Shape is essentially what me essentially measures how curly your hair is. So when you think about it, let's think of this as a strand of hair. This is straight hair. It has very little shape. As I start to apply tension, and that's essentially what a curl is, a straight, um, straight line or a straight piece of material that's had tension added to it. As I start to add some tension, the straightness turns essentially, and you can see it, into an S. That S is wavy, so it has more shape than straight hair. If that I keep turning it, I start to get these little corkscrews and that is curly hair. If that I keep turning it, it starts to fold down onto itself because the curl is so tight and that is kinky hair and kind of has that Z shape. Hopefully you can see that a little bit. So that's how shape for, you know, that's essentially shape relative to your hair. When it comes to the A, B, and C, and again we talked about this a little bit in the earlier video, A, B, and C essentially measures how curly, how wavy, how kinky your hair is. 
And the way that that's essentially measured, while some people actually give actual measurements to say a 3A is relative, you know, similar to the diameter of a golf ball. A uh, 3B is similar to the diameter of a stick of chalk. A 3C is, you know, that sort of thing. I just don't think it's worth getting caught up in that. I think more importantly, it's just kind of a matter of more, 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 less, more, most. So the wavy shape is essentially an S-shaped curl. And the 3A is the least wavy of the S shape. The 3B is the more wavy of the S shape. And the 3C is the most wavy of the S shape. Meaning if you added any more waviness to it, essentially it goes from being S shaped on over to being C or O shaped, meaning it's curly. And essentially what you can also think of is essentially, and we shared this a little bit earlier, think of these slinkies. So these are all essentially curly. So I have this one. I have this cute one that I got for Halloween that's a little bit smaller. And then I couldn't find anything, but hopefully you can see I have this other slinky sort of thing that came out of a pen. So if you're thinking about A, B, and C, think instead of your curl this way, think of it from this direction. A 3A or a 2A or a 4A, anything that's an A has a broader diameter distance from one side of the curl to the other. So this would be an A. This one, also curly, has a smaller diameter, so this would be a B. This one has the smallest diameter, so this would be a C. So all three are curly, all three have the corkscrew shape, but all three have a varying degree and di varying diameter. The bigger the diameter, the less shapely the curl. The smaller the diameter, the tighter the curl. So the next thing we're going to talk a little bit about is shine. What our eyes perceive as shine is essentially a measurement of how brightly light bounces back and is absorbed by our own eyes. So think of, for example, when you go to the eye doctor. The eye doctor will shine a beam of light into your eyes, and then essentially they'll place lenses in front of your eyes to measure how straight the line of light bounces back. So if you have 20-20 vision, then the light is shined into your eyes, and then it bounces back at a perfect straight line. If that you need glasses, essentially, what that means is that convex or concave tells you the direction of the bend, but essentially what that means is that your eye bounces the light back not at a straight angle, but at a distorted angle. And the degree of that angle tells them there that tells the doctor essentially the prescription that you need. But essentially, when light bounces back perfectly, our eyes get the most brightness bounced back, kind of gets the reflection of the most brightness, and that's what we perceive as shine. So if that light is not bouncing back at a perfect angle, then essentially what happens is that distortion means that our eyes perceive less brightness, which means that we perceive less shine. So straight hair bounces light back at a perfect degree. Curly hair bounces light back because of the curve at a distorted degree. And that's why your eyes perceive shine less so in wavy hair, even less so in curly hair, and even less so in kinky hair than straight hair. But I'm going to show you that also in a demonstration. So here's a basic demonstration of that. When I set my mirror up in front of me and I have it at a straight angle, when I shine a light on it, you get a lot of shine. You can actually see the blue line there. It comes back perfectly non-distorted, and so therefore you get a lot of brightness or shine. If I angle the mirror, similar to the angles from the various curls that you're have, you'll have in your hair, and I shine the light, it does not bounce back straight, and so therefore the light does not shine as brightly, and it does not look as shiny to your eye. 
This is why straight hair in its natural state appears more shiny than wavy hair and wavy hair more shiny than curly hair, curly hair more shiny than kinky hair. Again, if I hold the light just straight onto a bent angle, it does not bounce back perfectly. If that I hold the light on a, if I hold the mirror at a straight angle and shine the light, you get a perfect bounce back and that looks much more shiny and bright. So the next thing that we'll talk a little bit about is moisture. Moisture is something that is, it can be the pain in the tail of so many naturals because just that it seems like moisture is a problem for a lot of folks. And while on one hand it has a lot to do with the fact that a lot of people think oils versus water is the source of moisture, that's a whole different topic, it actually is a scientific fact that it is more difficult to moisturize curly hair versus straight hair and kinky hair versus curly hair. And I'm going to show you why. So let's pretend that this spoon, the end of this spoon here, is essentially your straight hair. When you apply water to this or run water over it, looks, look at what happens. Notice how the water rides the straight spoon from the beginning to the end. It just essentially slides down or rides along the straight shaft of the hair. Now let's go back to our slinky. If this is your curly hair and you run water across it, the water is dripping off at every single curl loop. It'll ride down and then at each curl, it drips off. That very basic reason is why straight hair is so much easier to keep moisturized than curly hair or kinky hair. Essentially water or moisture, just in the oils that you use to seal it even, just ride down the shaft of the hair. Even if you do nothing, if you just apply it at your, at your roots, the water and eventually the sealants that you use will just slide from the top, gravity will pull it straight down the shaft of your hair. When you have curly hair, what happens essentially is that it'll ride down and then the first loop that it gets to, it's not going to follow along that loop completely. Some of it may, but a lot of it's going to drip off and that's what happens. So that's why the curlier your hair is, the more difficult it is to keep your hair moisturized. So wavy hair is easier to moisturize than curly hair and curly hair is easier to moisturize than straight hair. Definitely check out some of my tutorials on that, but that's another reason why it's so, so, so very important. Not only that you get enough moisture in your routine, but that when you're oiling your hair with sealant, that you actually pull the sealant from the root of your hair all the way down to the ends of your tips. If you're just applying at the root, it's not going to slide down like it would on straight hair. So you are essentially missing out on what your hair needs there. So definitely pull it all the way down. I learned about this essentially, and it's very, you know, application-wise, it's also good to know. When you're pouring something, I always think this is probably so good, but when you're pouring that used frying grease into a container or trying to empty it, if that you pour it in, it, you know, you can make a big mess. All you need to do to make sure that it goes right into the container, stick a spoon right into the grease as it's pouring or into your liquids that you're pouring, and those liquids will ride that spoon all the way down into your container versus when you're pouring them, you have a chance of making a mess. So that very basic thing that probably a lot of us are doing, never really thought about that, but that essentially teaches you why it's easier to moisturize and keep straight hair moisturized than it is wavy hair, versus curly hair versus the most difficult of kinky hair. The last thing we're going to talk about is fragility. A lot of people think that type 4 hair is the most coarse, the most difficult, the, more, the most problematic, when actually type 4 hair is the most sensitive of all. Straight hair is more difficult to break. 
Whereas when you have the curlier your hair is, meaning therefore a two is not as curly as a three, and a three is less curly than a four. So if you're a four, your hair has a, a good chance of breaking when you're managing it, when you're applying products, when you're brushing it, combing it, washing it, whatever, at every single one of those loops. So the more loops you have, meaning if you're a 4C versus a 4B versus a 4A versus a 3C and on and on and on, the more loops you have, the more chances your hair has of breaking. So a type 4 is much more fragile than a 3, a 3 more fragile than a C, and 2, and a 2 more fragile than a 1. Likewise, a C is more fragile than a B, and a B is more fragile than a C. And now you know that information, what does that all mean? It's great to know that because essentially when you're picking products, it's very easy to understand and good to understand why if that you are a type 4, a heavier product may work for you because you need something heavier to weigh down your curls if that you're looking for a stretched look. It's also helpful because if you're a type 3 or type 4 or type 2, it helps you to understand why you may need to do more to make sure your hair is shiny versus somebody who has straighter hair. Likewise, it helps you to understand why type 4 has more shrinkage than type 3, has more shrinkage than type 2, and why when you're looking at your hair, you may be frustrated and thinking, geez, it doesn't look like my hair is growing, but your stretched hair is actually much longer than your shrunken hair. So to me, all of these things are much more important understanding-wise than hair typing. If you understand these basic, basic, basic science concepts, and feel free to try experiments at home. You can actually Google some things even. There's some very basic things they do in basic science classes, and you'd be surprised what you can find on Google. But essentially, these very basic science concepts help you to understand about your hair and help you to understand why you need to be more patient with your hair, more gentle with your hair if that you're a 4 because you're more fragile. Why if that you're a type 1, using a heavy product may give you just weight down, greasy looking hair, 1 or type 2, versus somebody who's a type 4 who may very well love a heavier product. So all of those things I think are much more important for you to understand and much more helpful when you, for you when you're picking products and trying to figure out which styles, techniques, and products will help you. So hopefully this has been helpful. Definitely please share your comments, give me some thoughts and feedback on it, and please feel free to reshare this video. I think, you know, I'm doing this because I love it, but more than anything, I think if each of us can help the next one on their natural hair journey, more of us will be more comfortable with going natural. So hopefully this has been helpful. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. And yes, before you guys comment, I am very well aware of the fact that I'm a total geek. But where I was young when I was younger and I hated that now, I'm all about being a geek. Geek shout out. So don't comment and think that that's offensive to me at all. I love being a geek. Finally that other behind